Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome to uh, Season 2, Episode 10 at the Colorado Rockies. And today we're going to be for finishing Season 2, going into Season 3. We will play through the off-season, free agency, arbitration, all that sort of fun stuff. And we will get ourselves to spring training and hopefully build a team that is ready to go a little bit better than 500 next year. Maybe even sneak into that, uh, to that wild card place. Let's face it, the Dodgers... They're going to be tough to run down, aren't they? But before we get to that, we're going to have our end of season awards. And before that, I thought I'd let uh, put up the screen here so you can see everybody's stats for the season. Um, so there's uh, pitching stats one. Uh, if you need to have a longer look, just give it a quick pause. And I'll go over to pitching stats two so you can get a good uh, full uh, briefing of what everybody did this year. Um, yeah, I never really look at pitching stats two, to be honest. And I don't know what most of these things are. But uh, you guys, I'm sure... <laughs> we'll know what you're looking at. So that's those things. If we have a look at the hitting side of things, uh, again, batting stats, one for everybody. The batting this year was absolutely superb. Um, so hopefully that will carry itself over into next season. So that's uh, batting stats, one. Um, and we'll have a quick look here at batting stats, two, for you as well. Uh, and I know that some of you like to have a look at the fielding things. Again, if you need to have a longer look, just give it a quick pause. Um, and we'll have a look at fielding stats for you as well. And uh, you can see all of those things there. All very, very interesting to uh, those of you who know what they mean. I'm very, very sure of that. All right, let's get off to the end of season awards. Then when we come back, uh, we'll be able to go and see who it is that has won the playoffs. This is the way the playoffs look coming into uh, into the postseason. Um, so after the end of season awards, we'll find out who's been crowned World Series champions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Colorado Rockies end of season awards. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, what an audience. What a turnout. Thank you so much. Well, 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 thank you, everybody, and welcome to the end of season awards for this 2021 season. It was a big improvement from last year, wasn't it? There will be no public whippings this season. I think the entire squad deserve a big round of applause. We looked a completely, looked, it looked like a baseball team, a professional baseball team this year. Well done, boys. Well done. The first award this evening is for the pitcher with the most wins, and this guy, I'll be honest, he started the season in AAA, and I'd all but written him off as a uh, professional pitcher, but he proved me wrong. With 13 wins this year, the winner is Antonio Zantazella. The next award is for the highest batting average, and this guy didn't just lead the club, he led the entire National League. With a batting average of 339, the winner is David Dahl. The next award is the Golden Bullseye, awarded to the player that has been hit most by pitchers this year. And, well, this guy was new to the club for this season, and he, he did really, really well. Got hit 13 times to win this award. He deserves it. The winner is Jackie Bradley Jr. The next award is one that I know the players all want, and they fought for this season. They really, really did. Everybody wanted to win this one. It's the golden anchor for most double plays hit into. And in the end, the winner with 18 double plays, it was the catcher, Christian Vazquez. The next award is the Golden Boot, awarded to the pitcher who issues the most walks. And this guy, he wanted a clean sweep of the pitching awards. Unfortunately, he was one win short, but with 68 walks, he's got himself a trophy. He is Robbie Ray. The next award is the Golden Glasses, awarded to the batter who struggles to see the ball and has struck out the most times this season. And well, I had a quite word to this guy before the awards tonight. I know he was looking for a clean sweep of the backing awards. And well, he hasn't quite managed it, but uh, he certainly managed to win this one. With 187 strikeouts, get back up here, David Dahl. Next award is the Golden K, awarded to the pitcher with the most strikeouts. This is one that I know uh, a lot of people want to win, but there was only one contender for us this season. He led the league in strikeouts, and with 254, that man is Robbie Ray. The next award is the Golden Broom, awarded to the man who sweeps clean the bases, the man with the most RBIs. And well, I said it before about this guy, and I'll say it again. He has got to be in contention for the National League MVP. 
123 RBIs for this man. Get up here, David Dahl. The next award is for the pitcher with the best ERA. And, well, it was never going to be a starter, was it, for us, let's be honest. But uh, this guy in the bullpen, really, really solid. An underachiever all year, quiet achiever. With an ERA of 2.55, uh, that winner is Jacob Patterson. The next award is for the man with the most home runs. And we hit home runs this year, didn't we? Absolutely amazing stuff. But, uh, yeah, this man just a notch above everybody else. With 43 home runs for the Rockies, the winner is David Dahl. Look, Bayez, I know that you had more home runs overall, but some of those weren't for the Rockies. This was the Rockies Awards Night, not the Major League Baseball Awards Night. Now sit down and behave yourself. Unbelievable. All right, the next award is for the uh, is for the worst player this year. It's the horse's ass, of course. Uh, and it seems harsh to give out a horse's ass this season. We were so improved from last year, uh, where I think the, the Colorado Rockies playing staff got the horse's ass, to be honest. But this season, there was one guy that annoyed me, I've got to be honest. He's a very, very talented pitcher. I wanted him to be our closer, and he repaid me with a closing percentage save rate of, uh, of 400 or so. So the horse's ass this year goes to that man. It's Junior Fernandez. All right, the next award is for the best pitcher. Now, as always is the case, there is a formula we use to determine this. That, along with a list of tonight's winners, is down in the description of the video. Uh, but let's start with third place with a score of 20.28. It's Zantazella. In second place, with a score of 28.63, it's our lowest ERA man, Patterson. But the winner, with a score of 39.33, it is Robbie Ray. And now it's time to acknowledge the best hitters. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you'll notice some higher scores in this category. We were amazing with the bat this year. The best in the National League in most, if not all, categories. Uh, and again, the formula we use to determine this is uh, down in the description. So in third place with a score of 67.16, it's second baseman Brendan Rodgers. In second place... With a score of 70.02. It's David Dull. And that means the winner. With a score of 73.96. He defends his trophy from last year. The winner is Nolan Arenado. What's this Nolan? What do you mean you're voiding the last year of your contract? You can't do that. That's why it's called a contract. Nolan. We'll talk about this afterwards. Unbelievable. You better not be leaving us, mate. I will be pissed. Uh, anyway, the next award, it's the final award. It's the big one. It's the Golden All-Star for this season's uh, best player at the Rockies. I tell you who's not going to win it now. It's friggin' Arenado. But, uh, well, there was only, I think, one man that was ever going to win this anyway uh, before you decided to get out of my sight. Uh, anyway, the Golden All-Star, it goes to David Dull. Well done, mate. So there we go, that's all the awards done. Congratulations to David and the rest of tonight's winners. It's been a fantastic season, it's been a fantastic evening, and we look as though we're in decent shape going into next season. So thank you everybody in the auditorium, thank you for you watching at home, enjoy the rest of your evening, and Arenado, my office now. So there we go, end of season awards are done, the Dodgers have won the World Series, I don't think that's really a surprise, it was a very tight uh, playoff series all the way through until we got to the World Series, certainly our league anyway, the uh, the National League, um, and uh, yeah, then they absolutely walked the World Series, but the devastating news, and let me know what you think of David Dahl being the player of the year, I, I think he just has to be, uh, but the devastating news is that Arenado has voided the last year of his contract, I didn't know he had an option to do that. And that leaves a rather large hole at third base. Um, yeah, so that's not the best start to uh, the offseason, is it? We've got a decision needed on uh, on Vazquez. I would very, very much like to keep him, uh, so we will execute that option. Uh, that means he stays, doesn't it? Hopefully. <laughs> Message expired, so hopefully that means he's staying. Uh, Desmond, you can go away, mate. How much is that? That's going to save us 15 million. Uh, that's amazing. What's going to save us $8 million. So let's get you out of the club, please. Uh, owner goals. 
Um, let's have a look here. We did we did play above 500. Um, we improved the bullpen from the ERA. We obviously let Travis Story go. Um, we did uh, we did oh we got Bayes as a acquired and nationally popular player, so that's good. Uh, we did we increase the attendance? I don't think we did. Not too much. Um, so next season we want to play 500. Uh, again, increase the attendance, which we'll do our best. Have a final total balance of 20 million. Just make my budget 20 million less, mate. Uh, bring in one of our drafted players to the team. We'll try and do that. We have a pitcher who's close that we drafted the first year. Uh, and keep building up the team in order to reach um, to reach the playoffs in the next three seasons. So that's, we still have two seasons to do that. The budget that we have to do this is 144 million for the payroll. So we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, some staff members retiring, the scouting director. That's annoying because I just bought him in last year. Uh, the bench coach is retiring as well. That's annoying because now I have to try and find a new one. Uh, we've already gone through and got all the staff to stay that we wanted to stay. So that's not a problem, any of this. Prospect listing. Do we have anybody? No, we do not. The offseason begins. Arbitration begins. So we'll go and have a look at that in just a second. Um, GM is fired by Texas uh, as well as it looks like Miami. And uh, who's that? Not Washington Nationals and the Pittsburgh Penguins as well. No, Pirates. Penguins is ice hockey, isn't it? Uh, so there's been a few uh, job vacancies there. But let's go and have a look at arbitration because that's what we've got to worry about. Hoffman, he's not on much. He hasn't done much for us either. We don't have a head scout right now, which doesn't help either, does it? Um, I'm thinking for the, what he's on, he might be worth. Uh, he might be worth a bullpen shout. Uh, Zantazella, yes, I want to keep him. I think he's very good for us. Pazos, I don't know if we want to keep him, you know, he went to AAA and did okay, or did well, no, I don't think we want to keep him, you can go, uh, okay, so that's that, Walters, I would like to keep him, do I want to pay 2.6 for him, I probably do, that's fine, McMahon, you can stay, Rogers, you can very definitely stay, um, Hampson, yes, you can stay for that money. That's an absolute bargain. And Tapia, yes, even for six million, I would like you to stay. Uh, Arenado, is there anything we can do to try and keep you at the club? And uh, Gray, I'm willing to let you go. I think um, eight million. Yeah, we can do better than that. I'm pretty sure. Bayez, we can't afford to keep him. Um, and. I'll go and check all the AAA stuff off of camera or the minor league players. So that is that. Guys, we will be back uh, well, next time, I guess, for free agency. Although there'll be the Major League Awards. We'll come back for those. So that's $17 million a year, seven seasons. Yep, all right, perfect. Sounds good, mate. Look, I'm absolutely delighted that you've decided to stay with us. And, well, hopefully we'll see some more of your form this season uh, in these coming seven, eh? Well, if there is any positive to Arenado leaving, and there's not really, but... It has given us the money to make sure we can re-sign Javier Baez. So we've done that. Seven years, uh, 17.1 or 17.2 million a year. He has an opt-out of, of, the, of the seventh year. So at least six years, which will take him to 34, 37. It's not a massive salary. I'm hoping we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to trade him if we need to. But, I mean, I look at his, his defensive, really good defensive player. So worst case scenario, I'm hoping anyway... All we'll have is a very good defensive shortstop that's a little bit overpaid. So, um, yeah, Javier Baez is staying. That is, well, that's something we have a big hole to fill at third base now, don't we? Um, yeah. All right, it is time for the Major League Baseball Awards. So before that, we have signed a new scouting director. And have we got a scouting director here? Look at this. Almost the perfect scouting director. He favors tools. We've got him on a five-year deal. I saw him. I was not letting him go anywhere. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's going to... Uh, that's going to benefit us very, very much in the long term. Uh, but Golden Gloves have been announced. And as you would imagine, we do have one winner. It is Arenado at third base. You traitorous, traitorous man. Uh, but that was pretty much it for us. You can see all the other Golden Glove winners there. Um, if you want to have a look at the American League side of things, um, there we go. Is there any names I recognize as former players of ours? Not that I can see. Next award is, of course, the Reliever of the Year. Um, pitching awards tend not to be our thing, though, don't they? And they continue to be not our thing. Josh Hader of the Brewers was the reliever of the year. And what a reliever he is as well. Um, yeah, so he's won that. Uh, other side of the of the coin, it was uh, James Kanachak, is it, for the for the Indians? Um, 
Again, pretty good. Control's an issue for him, but other than that, he's uh, he's quite good, isn't he? Next award is the uh, golden, no, what's it called? The platinum sticks, the uh, silver sluggers. So we have two silver sluggers. Christian Vazquez, our catcher, has won it. And that, to be honest, is not a surprise. He was absolutely superb for us this season. Uh, look at that, batting 296 for him when he came to us, or after he came to us from the Red Sox. And the other one, no surprises whatsoever, David Dull. Uh, out there in left field, he has won the Silver Slugger as well, and I am really, really curious to see if he wins uh, the MVP, because I think he's got to be close, but uh, I'm sure there'll be somebody that's a little bit better. So they were the only two, though, for uh, for the Rockies, but two out of uh, nine is not bad, is it? And the American League side of things, we can see that here. Vlad Jr. at first base, um, of course, is a former player of ours, and that is pretty much it. Eli Jimenez, we had him at the Mets ages ago in uh, the last version of the game. Next award is, what's that Japanese baseball? Next award is the Rookie of the Year. We had a few rookies this year, so we might have a mention. So, no Rockies got a mention. The Rookie of the Year was Dylan Carlson. He is a very good outfielder. Actually, I tried to, uh, to trade for him at one point, I think, this season, but uh, no such luck, as you can see. Uh, and the American League side of things, it was Seiya Suzuki. Now, of course, we had him at uh, the Mets. Japanese uh, Japanese player, so uh, nice to see the name again. Next award is Manager of the Year. I don't think Bruce got, he didn't do quite enough, did he? So before we get to Manager of the Year, we do have a new bench coach now as well. This is him. Uh, I don't know how good he's going to do. It's, uh, he has good relationships, good development, uh, so let's hope that that works out okay for us. Um, so yeah, that's our new bench coach. But getting back to Manager of the Year, it was the Minnesota Twins manager, and you'd imagine it was the LA Dodgers manager because they were absolutely superb this season, yeah. Uh, next up, it's Cy Young. And again, pitching awards, not really for us. So the American League, it went to uh, McCullers Jr. I know the name. We faced him as the, at the Mariners, didn't we? He is very, very good. And look at that. Absolutely wonderful season he had as well. And on the uh, outside of things, Nate Pearson got a mention as the other nominees there. Well, vote recipients. Uh, on our side of things, it was uh, Lament from the Padres that won it. Um, didn't really lead any, we didn't lead any any categories, but obviously just good across the board. Did we have anybody get a mention? Um, doesn't look like we did, no. I thought maybe Robbie Ray, but uh, his ERA wasn't good enough, I don't think. Now it's time for MVP. I am convinced that David Dahl's a chance. Let's see how he does. Oh, that's outrageous. It went to Gavin Lux of the Dodgers just because he won the World Series. Uh, David Dahl did come in, what's that, fifth, which is not too bad. Do we have anybody else? We did. I saw Rockies down there. Brendan Rodgers got a mention, um, and that looks like it. So just the two of them. Uh, but I tell you what, I thought David Dahl, he must have been close. Well, he was close. He was fifth. Uh, so there we go. Gavin Lux had a decent year, won the World Series. Well done, you. Uh, and on the American League side of things, it was Vlad Jr. Of course it was. He is a god amongst men. Um, so he has uh, won that MVP. So that brings us to the end of the Baseball Awards. Uh, I think the next major thing, unless something happens, is going to be uh, arbitration and free agency. Okay, so arbitration is in. So Brendan Rodgers has got a little bit more than what we offered, but that's fine, to be honest, for him. I'm happy to pay that. McMahon has got uh, what we offered, a little bit less than what he wanted, so that's good. Tappy has got $6 million. Uh, He wanted more than that. To be honest, he's probably worth a little bit more, having almost <laughs> been batting champion. Hampson, very, very useful, uh, uh, what's the word, utility player for us. He's got seven fifty, which is less than he wanted, which is good for us. Uh, Zent Zatzella. He has got, uh, well, he's got 2.3 million, which is not too bad, to be honest, because he's going to be in our starting rotation next year. Arenado has gone free agency, you absolute bastard. Um, Hoffman, he'll be a bullpen option for us, and he's only got what we wanted, which is good. And Walters has got his 2.6, which is less than what he wanted, which is excellent. Um, so that is that. Well, that means free agency is uh, just around the corner. So here are the international free agents. Uh, let's have a quick look here. We've got some pitchers. We've got... Oh, hello there. Um, ah, he doesn't... He's not really a starter, is he? He only has the two pitchers. And, well, do we want to pay $6 million-ish for, uh, for a bullpen guy when we're already relatively well served there? We will add him to a short list and keep an eye on him. Uh, second baseman, no. I'd love a third baseman. Please be good. Um, no. What about the other guy here from Japan? No, and he's 30 as well. So, 
Yeah, we do definitely have a whole lot. An Australian, no, he's rubbish. Uh, and a North Korean. I mean, if he didn't have to bat, he'd be okay. But unfortunately, he has to bat, doesn't he? Um, I'm tempted to sign a North Korean just because. Let's offer him a minor, year, <laughs> a minor league deal. Uh, so that's that. The major ones here, uh, obviously, Arenado. Now, what does he want? He's going to want millions and millions and millions, isn't he? Um, 45 million. What do we have to offer? We have 10 million to offer. So that's not going to happen, is it? Um... Oh, we've lost Aaron. There was nothing. There's nothing I could do. Just confirm to me in the comments. There was absolutely nothing I could do about that. Uh, I didn't even realize his contract was coming due, and I feel like a bit of an idiot. What about Lindor? Could we get him? And he's probably going to want even more, isn't he? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's really, really disappointing. Um, let's have a quick look at the front office. Exactly what we have to spend. So we do have just the ten million uh, to try and get a third baseman in. Now we did have. We did have one option already at the club, which is Ryder Jones. Um, now, he's not the worst. He's not as good as Arenado, but we're, we're not going to find someone as good as Arenado. But he's not too bad. So, absolute worst case scenario, we might give him a chance and see how he does. But, uh, yeah, it's it's there's no way around it. It's a, just a massive blow to lose Arenado. Um, ah, that is... That is just really, really disappointing, isn't it? So free agents, let's... Uh, are we already searching by we are? Um, we'll keep an eye on Arenado. We'll keep an eye on Lindor and see, you know, if something comes up, if we can if we can go in for them. But you suspect they're just going to... They're both going to go to big market teams, aren't they? And yeah, there's not much we can do about it. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do here, see if I can weave some magic and uh, yeah, see what we come up with. Okay, we have completed a trade. Uh, going out is Sam Hillard. He was a decent defensive outfielder for us, but I've given him a couple of chances. Not much of a chance, to be fair, but I gave him a little bit of a chance. I didn't like him, and so we've traded him away to Minnesota, and in return, we've got in Eduard uh, Kalina. He is, uh, well, he, he came in as, as, a, as a relieving pitcher. Uh, I'm going to try him as a starter. He's not too bad. Uh, not too bad stamina wise either. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll come in and maybe be someone we can bring into our starting rotation for next year. So that's one trade done, but we still have that hole at third base. Okay, so two more players have signed from free agency. We did get our North Korean, so let's see what uh, what becomes of him. Uh, probably not much, but you never know. I don't think we've ever had a North Korean before, so that's uh, that's something. And we signed a starting pitcher, Matt Mercer. Will he amount to anything? I don't know. OSA ratings rate him a little bit higher than our head scout does. Uh, but he's on a minor league contract. He's out for six, seven months with a torn elbow flexor thing. Um, so we're not... You know, I didn't want to pay him any money, obviously. But we'll see what becomes of him. And we've really lost nothing if uh, the injury doesn't work out. But if it does work out okay for us, then, um, you know, we might have a decent picture there. We have breaking news out of Major League Baseball where the St. Louis Cardinals have announced the signing of third baseman Nolan Arenado on a seven-year, $255 million contract. Upon hearing the news, Rockies GM Ozzie Villan was quoted as saying, So there we go. Nolan Arenado has officially left us. He's joined the Cardinals. He's making an extra million and a half a year. I hope it's worth it, you snake. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's a pain in the backside. We do get a compensation draft in the supplemental first round pick. So that's uh, yeah. So, Rule 5 draft time, and we're not going to participate in it this year. There's not really anyone there that makes us uh, particularly better. Uh, there's a couple of players. Who's on my shortlist here? The problem, of course, with Rule 5 draft is that they have to be in the, in the, in the team. Um, and I don't know that, uh, that that's necessarily worth it for us. I wonder if we could trade for this guy, actually. Um... Can we get him for not much? No. So yeah, there's not there's not too much sense in it. So we'll uh, we won't take part in those festivities this season. Okay, we have a bit of Hall of Fame update here. There's been three inductees: A Rod, uh, David Ortiz, and Roger Clemens have all been inducted. Uh, those missing out: uh, Semi Sosa, he's been dropped. As has Darren Harron. Never heard of him. AJ Pasinski, uh, Tory Hunter. 
Kyle, L- L- this that that guy, and uh, Carl Crawford as well have uh, all been dropped from the ballot. So there we go, three inductees, Clements, Ortiz, and Rodriguez. Okay, so we are at spring training, and, well, we still haven't really filled that, uh, that third base um, spot, have we? I shouldn't say third base hole, that could... Uh, well, yeah, that has another meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, I thought I'd uh, give you a quick update of uh, of the minor league system, the farm system, and what we have coming through, and a couple of players that I am excited about. Now, Demarcus Evans, we've seen him before. He's the closer. Um, he's a bit of a, a bit of a loose cannon, but yeah, we'll see. He did uh, okay in AAA, and he came up the end of last year. Uh, so I'd like him to have a full season there and kind of see how he gets on. But Emerson Hancock, we of course drafted him. I think was it the first year. We drafted him, so he's one of the good prospects we have coming up as a starting pitcher, so maybe not this season, but next season, I'd like to think he'll be making an appearance. Matt Keach is, of course, uh, a catcher that we signed off of uh, International Amateur Free Agency, Uh, a good catcher, though he doesn't really have a catcher rating yet, but hopefully that'll come with time. Um, so he's going to work his way up through the system. Uh, we have a center fielder. Now, this is the guy that I have my eye on to basically come in and replace um, Jackie Bradley. So he has a couple of years to get where we need him to be this season, next season, and then hopefully he'll be ready. Um, so that is, uh, that's Yolki Penna. Uh, we have a right fielder that's coming through that is, yeah, okay, but maybe not anything too special. Um, the shortstops we have are not, I mean, they're good defensive shortstops, but I don't know that they've got the bats that we're going to really want. Um... They're both sort of in that, say, we, this guy's not even that good defensively. Maybe you could play a third baseman. Uh, we need a third baseman, don't we? Uh, but yeah, so we have those guys coming through. Uh, anybody else here? This, uh, we've got Dan Meyer. Is it, I think you'd pronounce it. Um, again, potentially, he could be a very, very good starting pitcher for us if the OSA ratings are anything to go off, but we'll have to wait and see how he comes through. Uh, so there are, you know, there are some bright spots coming through for us. Uh, we just, as I said, we just have to wait and see how they how they come through. Uh, Feltnut could be one for this season. He did okay in AAA last year, so we'll keep an eye on him for this season. Um, but yeah, that is uh, that's kind of where we're at. Who's this guy? Do I know this guy? Oh, he can be a pitcher and a, a center fielder, so they could be useful. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of yeah. You know, there is some light at the end of the tunnel, but not necessarily. Now, who's this guy that's come up with OSA ratings? Uh, he can play left field and a pitcher, and he's decent at both. Well, there we go. So he's actually could be quite useful. Um, he's a closer though, isn't he? Rather than a uh, oh no, he's got a bit of stamina about him. So he could be quite useful, actually, even though it says he's a closer there. So we do have some, we do have some, you know, some bright spots uh, coming through. But um, yeah, th- there is no way around it. It's a massive loss to lose, um, to lose Arenado. Now, this is kind of the way I see our starting lineup coming into the season. David Dull is still about a week away. So he, he'll get some sort of preseason in, which is good. Uh, and it doesn't look as though he's lost too much. Um, with the injury, so that's good. So I'm still kind of see Tapia leading us off. Uh, he'll play right field. We will have Brendan Rodgers. We'll drop him down to second uh, in the order. He'll bat, He'll play second base. Uh, we'll move David Dull down to third. He hit a lot of home runs last year. Um, so we'll move him back to third. Baez will stay at shortstop and bat f- uh, cleanup for us, and hopefully he can keep hitting home runs for fun. Ryder Jones is the guy that I'm, I'm thinking he's going to get the third base a shot at it and see how he goes. He could be quite good. You know, it might it might work out for us in a weird kind of way. Um, Evans, uh, sorry, Evan White at first base batting six. He can, of course, rotate with McMahon, who's a good bat as well. Then we've got Jackie Bradley in center field. Uh, and obviously we will have Christian Vazquez um, as the catcher. And hopefully, I tell you what, if he came back like he did last year, then that'll be even better again. But that is, uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, we've got obviously a lot of players in there. We're going to try at, at camp so at third base in spring training and see if we can retrain him in any way. Uh, but he's a good utility player anyway. The other third base options we have already at the club are this guy, who again is decent. You know, so um, we did ha- we do have a little bit. In, uh, in reserve at third base, and Colton uh, Welker, I guess you'd pronounce it, uh, again, decent, but definitely the weakest of the options, I would say, so we'll see what happens, we've got, a, uh, we've had a big, big blow there, and uh, we've just got to try and and, uh, and rebound, don't we, so let me know how you think we'll get on this season, we'll have, do go through spring training, see if we can 
we can get anything. There wasn't, there was no third baseman really in free agency anyway. So it's really, it's, it's all just come at the wrong time. Anyway, guys, it's thumbs up if you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you next. Subscribe if you're new, of course, and I'll see you next time as we will get the season underway. Who do we have opening day? Opening day is, is it the Mets? There it must be the Mets. We will be hosting the Mets on opening day. Take care.